Welcome back guys, Jerry with 3D HP. In today's video, we're going to talk about this awesome AK resin printer I just got. It's a Uniformation GK2, right after this. Okay, looking at all the parts, we got a nice silicone spatula, extra screws, a wrench, tweezers, allen, a nice steel spatula, some glove, protective gloves, side cutters, um, strainer, and a little plastic funnel. And here we have all the necessary paperwork. It tells how to set up the slicer and leveling papers. And here we have an extra protective screen and a piece of impact. Inside we got a nice plastic cover that covers the build plate, the resin vat, and there's a heater in the back, that's a charcoal carbon filter in the back to suck out any fumes that you might have. Take off the vat and take a look at it. Wow, it's a big screen, it's a 10.3 LCD, 8K. That drops down in the middle and simply slides back, very easy to lock into place. You take out the build plate, simply flip up the lever and it slides off very easy. Nice big area. It's already pre-leveled from the factory, but if you want you can check it. It has two heaters in it. To maintain an ambient temperature of 80 Fahrenheit, depending on your room temperature, it comes on when needed. Nice case. And there's a charcoal carbon filter in the back. Active carbon filter simply clicks in, sits there. Get rid of any. You got a fan there that sucks air out of it, blows it through the filter. And there's the two heater fans down below. The two case fans, power plug. An extra USB on the back if you need it, but personally I want them on the front, which it is. Here's all the specs for it. 110 plug for a USA. So yeah, it's a beautiful looking machine. Very nice. So Okay guys, I'm in my resin room, I got it all set up, got a nice spot for it. I just bought some new blue mats off of Amazon, but the Uniformation GK2 is here and ready to go. And I have a shelf up here, but I made sure I have, I have enough room. This is as high as the lid will go up, you don't want to go any further, you'll break it off. But that works perfectly fine. And yeah, I really like this, it's a really cool feature, one-handed. You don't have any uh, a knob or anything to screw you Pull the build plate straight off. Very easy to access. Let's go to a few things here. Then you slide it back in. Boom, it's locked. And you don't have any thumb screws to worry about on the resin bed. Your vat, your resin vat. So let's start taking a few things off. You gotta remove the plastic covering on the top, on the bottom. And also, when you have resin, you're taking it out, out of your vat comes with a nice cover. I won't be using it, but if you need it, there's a protective cover here that'll snap right on to, you know, keep any debris from getting in your vat. That's nice. And one thing here, it says, please peel before use. Grab this little piece of paper here, lift that up, and that's to protect the screen protector that's over the LCD. Now, this black strip that you see here, that is a screen protector. If that should ever get damaged, you can peel that up and you can replace this. Because initially, I didn't think I had a screen protector, but this is a screen protector. So you definitely want to remove this and throw that away. So, for the first time, I've got it plugged in. Um, let's go ahead and turn it on here. Uniformation, simple, so different. Flash drive in the front, it's loading up.
it's got an active charcoal filter in the back that's running so when you're uh, printing anything any kind of chemical smell you might have will be running through the carbon filter they'll filter out in debris it has two heaters down here in the bottom to keep your resin nice and warm so if it gets chilly out let's uh, figure out how we um, test the screen let's see data clean built-in storage Probably that button down there. System settings. Not that. Exposure test, okay. Let's hit exposure test. It says has resin bat been taken out, yes. Alrighty. And I'll take a picture of that and show you if you can't see it, but it shows a 20 by 20 square. And it says D20 millimeter around circle, and that's good. That's what it's supposed to show. Let's see. System update, back cleaning, Z axis movement. Let's check the Z axis. Move it up 10. Up. Back out of the screen. And I just checked the flash drive. I put it in my computer. It had a zipped up folder. Now I don't think this printer can read the zip file, but I did extract all the files and I put them back on the SD card. So now I've got a copy of them on my computer and I put them all back on the, the USB drive here. And it's got some really killer files from different Patreons. I mean, I've got some files I wanted to print, but there's some killer files on this right now. So let's put the bat back in. It simply drops in right around the middle. Click and that's it. It's in, ready to go. And it says, beware spill maximum 700 grams. So you don't want to spill this over 700 grams. So it's got a line right there. You don't want to get too high, otherwise it'll start going everywhere. So anyway, let's, and uh, Uniformation sent me out two, 2,000 gram bottles of uh, resin. I think one is white and one is black. Let's see. This one's white, 1,000 grams. And this one is black. So let's, what are we going to print in? Let's put it print in black. Let's see, where's my knife? I got a knife out here. Open this box up here, see what we got. A nice plastic bottle. Mark black. Wear gloves when using, shake well. Yeah, it's always best to wear your protective equipment, always wear gloves, wear safety glasses, you don't want to get anything splashed on you or anything whatsoever. Just to shake it up really good. Yeah, when you first fill your vat for the first time, you know, um, until I go to remove a print, I typically don't put on gloves. But they have some nice supplied gloves here. Let's see. One, two, three, four. It's like five pairs. That's cool. Oops. Figure out where my thumb goes. Now, I'm not going to give any resin on these right now, so I'll take them back off when I'm done. And then when the print gets done, then I'll put this particular pair back on. And where did I put my safety glasses? Better safe than sorry. Nope. Always wear your personal protective equipment, your PPE. Okay, okay chuck up good. Okay, underneath the cap, there's a foil seal that you have to pop. Oh, I got some resin on my glove right there. Uh, 
test files, go to U-Disk, model files, test files, user chip. Let's see what's here for test files. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention, this comes pre-leveled from the manufacturer, so you do not have to level it. If you do want to level it, you take out the bat, you put a paper on it with four strips, which I'll show you here on the screen, and then you can do a self-test. Once the bed comes all the way down and touches those four paper strips that's laying on top of the paper, you want a little bit of resistance on each one. You don't want it to be stuck so you can't pull it out on any of the four corners or you'll have to re-level the bed, which is simply done here by screws on top of this build plate. But like I say, it's pre-leveled, it should be perfect and ready to go, you shouldn't have to do anything. So, it shows a picture of the model right there. Uh, they have a version, their, I use their slicer, it's like Prisa slicer for an FDM printer. I drop the model in it, I tilt to the angle, I put automatic supports on it, I change no settings whatsoever, because I've never personally used uh, Prisa slicer with a resin printer, so I left it all stock. If there's nothing is being hollowed, so we're going to try printing it right here and see how it comes out. So, we'll give it a go. Okay, it's loading the files. It appears to be loading from the SD card, putting them on the control board. I believe that's what that's for. It's going up to 100%. And I don't think I put too much resin. I'm below the beware spill. I'm below that, so it should be good to go. But that'll be so cool when I get my DSLR next week and I can film the resin lapse. As it grows, every time it moves up a step and starts to cure, it takes a picture. So after five or six hundred pictures later, when you put it in your software to... See, how's that bad? Good, it's not overflowing, but it's close. Really close. Yeah, I put a little bit too much resin. It's not overflowing, but it's, it's really close. Anyway, I shouldn't have put so much resin in, I guess. Anyway, um, where was I at? I use DaVinci Resolve to edit my videos. When you take all those files off your camera, drop them in DaVinci Resolve, it automatically makes a video out of the time lapse. And then you can simply speed up the video file to make it go really fast or really slow, however you want. It's really cool. So yeah, I shouldn't have put so much resin in. I'm not overflowing, but I'm, real, I'm at the top. So, we'll close the lid. Since it's going to take 6 hours 46 minutes, uh, we'll come back later and check it out. Hopefully it all goes well. But I'm below the spill line. It says maximum 700 grams. Yeah, I'd, if these are 1,000 gram bottles. I definitely put a little more in guess, guesstimating it, but I went a little bit too high on that. So, anyway. Close the lid. It's got that active carbon filter in the back working, so it'll suck out any of the resin fumes. It'll filter it, so you shouldn't have any uh, problem with it. You're smelling up your room or anything. Um, when I print with a resin printer, my other printer, I can barely smell it. Depending on the resin, some resin stinks worse than others, so anyway. And then I got a Winix air purifier on the floor that I'll turn on here in a minute on both, so. Okay, the print is complete.
12 minutes. Uh, then I'll remove the supports on it. And then I'll rewash it for a few minutes because the supports might be blocking some areas and they can't clean it 100%. I'll rewash it. I'll set it out and dry it 100%. If it's hollowed, which this model is, or actually I think this one's solid, I don't remember. Anyway, I'll take it out in the garage, I'll get my air compressor, I'll completely blow out the inside of the model, I'll get it 100% dry on the outside and the inside before I throw it in my uh, curing station. Looks like the print's all done. Wow. Upside down, but very cool. Pre-wash it in IPA, I'll strip off the supports and then I'll wash it again. Really cool, I like how they move right on. Snaps down. Quite often I filter my resin after each print. You never know when you might get some debris or something in there. Piece of your model support to break off. And then your vat will come down the next time and rip your fat or crack your screen. So it's always good practice after each print to strain it. Now I did my last one. This will be my second print. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Something needs to be done. And grab their bottle. See if you have one of my filters. And we have some supply filters here. We're going to try that. Here it is. A trusty big funnel. You can pick these up at the dollar store, Amazon, pretty much anywhere. Slowly pour it, don't overflow the filter. So you want to strain everything through the filter. Whoa. You take your silicone. Squeegee. you out everything you can get. Now some people will clean out their vat with IPA. I use spray away glass cleaner. It works great, great, heats up the resin, does a perfect job. That still looks perfect, which it will. Unless you damage it and you have a failed print and you screw something up.
this is what I use to clean up all my resin spills, my tools, uh, everything. Spray away glass clean clear. The foaming action works perfect. Works great. See their maximum fill line, 700 grams is right there, a real slight step up. So obviously you fill with that vat and basically run up to that line. That tapers up heel just slightly. And it's marked here on the front, you don't want to go over that height. So one more step I like to do. Now on all my resin printers, when I started out with Elohu Mars, a very small one years ago. I use PTFE lube on the FEP to help reduce the popping and it helped dramatically. When I moved to a mid-sized resin printer, I found out that Rain-X works much better to relieve the popping. Today on this printer, I haven't really noticed any popping effect whatsoever, but I did have heard it in the past on my Anacubic, so I always use Rain-X spray-away glass, uh, Rain-X water repellent, put a little bit in here, wipe it out with a blue shop tail on both sides, boom, you're good to go. So let's take a few drops, put a little bit in there, blue shop towel, wipe it around, clean both sides with it, and then we're good to go. That back in, and it simply clicks in place, ta-da, just like that. And if you go da-da, that helps that out. Okay, caps on. Get out of the way. Get my glass cleaner. Spray some of these things up, clean them. See if I got any resin. Good to shake the bottle a little bit. And we'll pull that back up the next print. has been loaded doing the red skull. I've got his body in there at an angle. I picked the bottom file there and now it's loading it off the SD card. And then print and start. Open up the lid so you can see what's going on here. And we have a nice blend of black and white. Looks like it gave it a green tint there. That looks really cool, a spider pattern though. Thank you. 
it, guys. Let's check out these prints, see how they came out. Here's a Wolverine bust. This file comes on the USB stick. Came out amazing. I think I got all the supports off. It's done in the black resin. I did have a problem, though. See that crack along the bottom? It's like a layer shift. It runs through the back of the model down here above my thumb. I can putty that and fix it. I'm not sure why that happened. Um, this was a hollowed model, and uh, I had it pre-hollowed. I had it tilted back. I didn't have it flat on the build surface. I never print like that. I'm not sure why that happened. But other than that, it came out beautiful, and I can touch that up with a little, like I said, putty, and I can fix that. And that came out amazing. And that's on the USB stick. And um, this one, I believe, is by Villain Designs. Warrior, I'm not really sure what it's called. He's printed solid in their black resin. And once again, I think I got off all the supports. It came out really nice, highly detailed. Very highly detailed. Excellent. And then moving on. This is from Collective Studios. It's on the SD card. Um, as you've seen in the video, when I was running low on the black resin, I dumped the white in it. I shouldn't have done that. I forgot. I should have cleaned the vat. Started out with white, that way I have completely black models to show you, completely white models. And then as the red resin ran low, then I could have added the black back to it. And then at the end I could have wound up with gray, but I made a mistake there. I apologize for that. But it came out beautiful. And like I say, it's from Collective Studios. Craig Scrap Figs. I guess that's who the character is. Pre-hollowed. Very nice. And at the end of the video, guys, I'll have pictures of all these so you can get a good look at them. Beautiful. Excellent. Really high detail. And then over on Wicked's Patreon, we've got Hydra. This was not on the SD card, but if you join Wicked's Patreon, you can get this model with sculpts. I do not have him glued. Let me take his head off here. But look at that quality. It's beautiful. Any little scratch you see on that's for me when I cleaned off supports. Whether it be my hand or a razor knife or something cleaning off little supports. And there's two versions of the statue. One where he's got his arm down and then there's another version where he's holding his hand up in the air and holding the gun up. That's beautiful. And then on this base it had kind of a floral arrangement that went around both sides like leaves. Well, when I was removing supports, I accidentally broke off one side, so I chose to remove all of it. So the little flowery stuff on both sides, like it's gone. But the base came out beautiful. And this one I sliced and I hauled it and I put in grain holes at the bottom. And uh, it's three millimeters on my supports, or three millimeters thick on it and I hauled it. I still got a little cleanup to do on it before I prime it and paint it. And then Red Skull, he has various heads here. You can put on the model. They're not the different hats. Yeah, excellent. Well, oh, very beautiful. So yeah, this well, I've got the printer running in the background, but we can hear all sounds and fans on it. Very nice. But yeah, I've done a wonderful job. Wonderful job. And like I say, it's an 8K monochrome screen. It's got a 10.3 LCD. It has a carbon filter in the back for odor control, and I've done an amazing job. Because usually when I'm resin printing, uh, de my, depending on what resin you're using, some of them have more odors than others. But I can be in my hobby room and I can notice I'm resin printing. It doesn't smell real bad, but I can I know what I'm printing. With this, I couldn't smell anything. I didn't notice I was resin printing. I didn't have any kind of an odor. 
I didn't smell anything, so the charcoal filter is doing a wonderful job. And the build volume on this is 228 by 128 by 245, uh, 245 millimeters tall. The total weight of this printer, empty with no resin in it, is 42 pounds. And it has a built-in heating system. Right here and right here, there's two heaters and fans built in. It'll main, depending on your surrounding air temperature in your house, it'll maintain 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That way it helps keep your resin at the proper temperature for printing. And what I believe this micro switch pour is up here in the top. When you open that up, I bet it disables those heaters. That way you're, it doesn't sit there and run constantly trying to heat the outdoors, you know, inside your house. So I think that's what that micro switch is for. I'm pretty sure that's what that's for. But yeah, I've done a wonderful job. So no issues whatsoever. And yeah, I'm very happy and very thankful that uh, Uniformation sent this out to me. Their new GK2 AK resin printer is awesome. Super cool. Um, and if you made it this far, you guys are awesome. I really appreciate it. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share. And, and when you're not using your resin, it's got a cover here. You just put on the bat, and you can, you know, if you have more than one bat, or you still want to get any debris in there, if you got the lid open, you can put this cover on it. So that's a nice addition here. Um, yeah, please like, subscribe, share. And I'll be doing many, many, many videos. I just got my new DSLR in the mail, my SL3, so I can do resin lapses. I didn't have it yet because my other one, my TI-5, had died, it broke on me, and I wasn't unable to do resin lapses for this video, as you know I always do whenever I can on my videos, but I got many more videos to come, and this is an amazing printer, and there'll be pictures here of all this stuff at the end of the video, you can check it out, and specs on the machine, there'll be some pictures here, you can check all this out, so uh, until next time guys, happy re uh, resin printing, and you have an awesome day, thank you.